Hey guys, it's Kaylor. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we're diving into UI buttons, how to create some better buttons, the things you should pay attention to when making your buttons, and just some overall guidelines and tips to follow to make sure your buttons are nice and easy to click on in your designs. So let's go ahead and get started. So first up is the size. So if we look at this button here, it's a good size for this mock-up that I created for this video. Real quick example of a website, and we have this nice button. It's on a white background, so it contrasts well, and it's a good size, I can easily click on this. So you wouldn't want the button to be too large. If I were to scale this up to a super large size, it just doesn't look like a button anymore. You can see it kind of looks like maybe a banner, and you might be confused as the user as if this is a button or not. And same thing if we go too small, if we make this button small like that, for example, it's harder to find, it's harder to click on, and it looks cramped, and it just doesn't look like a nice button. So there's several things that can determine the size of the button from the label or icon size that's in the button to the padding that you use. So for a desktop and website, I would recommend having like a 16 size font and then having a decent size padding, no less than maybe 16 on the sides and maybe eight to 10 on the top. So if I change these values here to something like eight for the top and the bottom, you can just see the text is really cramped and it just doesn't look appealing. So if I were to start bumping that up on the sides, however, to, to something like 16, it's got some good padding and the text can breathe on the sides. Same thing for the top. If we start to expand that a little bit more, it's starting to look more like a button when I get around 12 points. So you wanna make sure that you're using a decent size padding. For me, I like to go with something like 24, even on the sides or even larger to 32. And then on the top, I like to have it a little less, somewhere around 16 to 18 looks pretty good. Of course, you can have much larger buttons, but just make sure that it looks nice. The padding's not over the top or too small. You just got to find what looks good for your design. And you've got a nice button that's easily clickable and it looks like an actual button. Here's two examples of something you might have on a mobile layout. So on a phone or a tablet, I would recommend having 40 points to 48 points for your normal square buttons. So I have a circular button here and you wouldn't want to go smaller than 40 because if you do you might have that problem where when somebody taps on your icon they might miss it because the hitbox is too small so apple recommends 40 i think it's android that recommends 48 so i usually set mine to 48 or 40 just to have it in that sweet spot of course you can go larger for a design preference but just make sure that 40 to 48 is what you're hitting so that it's tappable same thing with your larger buttons so in this case i might have a horizontal button that fills the full width of the screen. You want to make sure that it's at least 48 in height here. So I have 62 because with that 16 size font, I'm get really getting a nice height value here for this button. So this would be easily clickable and tappable on a mobile device. Another thing to look at with buttons is the shape of the actual buttons. You want to use a shape that we're used to seeing. Uh, so if you go with something custom that it looks super crazy, like something like this with this weird pin tooled button. It just doesn't look right. It doesn't fit and it doesn't even look like a button and it's just distracting. It kind of looks like a decorative element. So you want to try to stay away from custom buttons. I've seen a few that work, but most of them don't. So just stick to standard button shapes like a circle or a good old rectangle or even the pill shaped where it's just a rectangle with a nice border radius added on. You can even go with a clickable link with that underlined text. We're also accustomed to seeing that, but you wouldn't want to go with a hexagon or something crazy. Another thing to pay attention to with your buttons is the contrast that you're using. So you have two contrasts here. You have the button to the background or whatever's behind it. May it be a card or just the background here like this design. And then you also have the text contrasting on the button itself. So a good way to check this is by using the plugin Stark that I featured in a recent video. I'll link that on the screen now. If I go ahead and run this, you can see I have this nice contrast option. If I select my button text, it's gonna tell me if this button text is contrasting on this rectangle, which in case it is, because it's obviously black on white. But if I were to go with a colored button, so let's change the fill of this rectangle to a nice blue color. If I go super light like that, this is obviously not going to pass the double A and triple A standard. So the double A on Stark is like the standard for digital and online content. 
and the AAA is making sure it is absolutely like perfect accessible. So I always aim for the AAA. And then of course, Stark's gonna give suggestions. So I might want to darken the blue, make it a little bit more rich or take the text more in a gray or black color to make this contrast actually work. So you wanna pay attention to that contrast so that the users can actually see the button and it stands out. You can see if I zoom out here, it's really light and it's kind of hard to see that. Whereas if I click on that rectangle and I change the blue to a really rich, vibrant blue, it stands out a whole lot more. So let's go back into start. And we'll see if we're passing. And we are passing on the double A, so I'd want to tweak it to pass the triple A. But you can see the difference when it's zoomed out here. That really pops and grabs your attention. Another thing you want to look at with the kind of the contrast is and the colors you're using is does this color that I'm using fit the design? And that's kind of going into color, which I'm not going to go into in this video, uh, but this is a blue button and there's kind of a bluish purple here in the design. So it might work, but you also want to consider the other colors that are in your design. If you have too many blue elements all over the screen, like all my text, for example, is this same blue color. It might not look that great and it might not stand out as a call to action button your users might not find it as easily. So that's another thing to take into consideration. Finally, you wanna pay attention to the alignment of the label, the icon, whatever you have in your button. So you wanna make sure that everything is centered, especially for text. You wanna make sure that's not like slightly off. So if it were to be further down a little bit, it just doesn't look right. And you wouldn't wanna have it aligned to the left for some random reason. The good rule to follow is when you have a button, just make sure the label is for the most part centered is going to look good when you throw an icon in with a label you can play around with it and get a little bit more creative so i'll show you a quick example of that i'm just going to throw this quickly in an auto layout and shift a to do that and i'm going to make sure everything's centered by clicking this center alignment icon and we'll throw in a simple arrow and i'll change that to white so we can see it and so with this, you can get pretty creative with it. You can have the gap in between these two elements pretty far and have a longer sized button. That's up to your design preference, but you wouldn't want to have your padding like asymmetrical like that. That just doesn't look as appealing. Same thing if I add more padding on the left for some reason. So you want to make sure for the most part, everything is still centered. And one more quick tip here is you might be noticing it. The visual hierarchy is kind of off. You want to pay attention to the size of the icon in relation to the label. So in this case, I would want to drop this down, kind of overshadowing our text just a little bit. I think the smaller arrow looks a little nicer. So those are several tips for creating better buttons, paying attention to things like visual hierarchy, the alignment, the contrast, the size, the padding. So hope you guys found this helpful for creating better buttons in your UI designs. If you did, make sure you give it a like, subscribe for more design and Figma related content every single week. In the meantime, check out these related videos. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.